Hi, uh, this is Tim Jarrett again with another Tekendo Emacs tutorial. Um, this week we're going to be talking about macros. Uh, macros are kind of a more advanced topic, but I really like them a whole lot. Um, they're really, really useful for doing um, advanced text editing or for automating things, um, quickly transforming a large amount of text according to uh, some rules that you define. Um, and I think you'll find that they're incredibly helpful for writing code or just for formatting stuff. Um, so let's jump right into it. Um, and see what happens. Um, so here I am again in Emacs. Um, we're not going to spend a lot of time looking at the screen. Um, let's jump right into an example. Um, a lot of the things I use macros for is uh, writing tests um, or maybe using some sort of uh, API that's incredibly verbose where you uh, repeat yourself a lot um, or occasionally enumerating things, even debugging. These are all um, great use cases for macros. I'm sure there's a lot of better ones, um, but this is, what, this is what we're going to talk about today. Um, so I'm going to start off, I'm going to open up uh, some Ruby file, uh, foo.rb, so I'll kill that uh, text there. And let's just um, split this buffer, so I'm going to hit control x3, and I'm going to open up um, just a file called names.txt. Uh, so let's open that. Okay. So I have here um, some, you know, bare text names. It's ASCII, uh, split by new lines. Um, you could get a lot of files like this if you're a developer um, from business developer people. It might be a list of MAC addresses. It might be email addresses. Uh, it could be a CSV or uh, maybe some XML. Either way, you have some text, and you want to sort of transform this into something more useful. Um, let's make an example. Maybe I have um, some models, and I want to uh, create some person models out of all these names. Um, and there's a really easy way to do that with macros, and um, let's just do that. So I'm going to start off by defining a macro. You do that with control uh, single quote. Okay, so it says defining keyboard macro. That's great. And the way macros work is you can hit any keys, um, and it records those keystrokes and plays them back. So let's copy this. I'm going to hit um, control space to set a mark, control E to go to the end of the line. I'm going to copy with command W. I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, type some person.create. And let's just pretend I have this model that does something like that. And I think, I think that'll do pretty well. OK. So I'm going to hit new line, uh, maybe a second new line. I'm going to go back over, move back to the beginning of the line with control A. I'm going to move down. And then that's my entire macro. I'm going to define it with uh, command W again. Great. So I have that macro defined. Um, let's play it back a few times and see what happens. I'm going to hit command W. And OK, it creates one for that again and again and again. Great. So I've turned some basic ASCII text into some actual code. And if I had done that by hand, it probably would have taken me about twice, maybe three times as long, depending on how many typos I make. So that's pretty useful. Um, great. So let's talk a bit more about macros. They can do more than just that. Um, maybe you have a case where um, you have some, some number you want to uh, increment. Um, for this case, let's say maybe um, I have a test for this class. And uh, the test is going to create several people classes and do something with them. And I'm just going to start a new macro with uh, control, single quote. I'm going to say, um, let's create one person. And I'm not very creative, so I'm going to type person. And I want to type person 0. And the next time I run this, I want to type person 1. So I'm going to insert a counter um, with control quote. And I'm going to finish this line, and I'm going to define that macro again with command W. Okay, so if I run this a few times, each time it runs, it uses that counter and increments it, which is incredibly helpful if you have um, a case where you're doing maybe potato programming, something like um, puts uh, two potato, puts three potato, for potato. Any case where you have something where you're just incrementing a number, um, this can be incredibly helpful. Um, 
but it, it's this is kind of a a very simple example. You could imagine this might be very useful in a case where maybe you're trying to debug some code and you don't have a very good debugger. Um, so let's just open up um, some project here, um, and then go into some random random code. Let's see if I can find something good. Okay, so let's find a method here in this Ruby code that's a little bit long. Maybe we have some code that calls this, and we're not entirely sure what the um, what the entry point is. So let's write a macro that just prints out a bunch of numbers. So real quick, I'm just going to go into this def block. I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to start defining a macro. Let's see, control single quote. I'm going to put, and I'm going to print out a string that's just a counter, and then I'm going to close that string, search for the next def block, and go to the end of the lines, control E, start a new line, and define that macro like that. Okay, so if I run the macro a few times with command single quote, you can see it prints out that next number and goes down to the next def block. Now when we get to the bottom, um, the keyboard macro is terminated because we couldn't actually find another def block, which is fine. Um, you'll find that occasionally you want to run a macro um, all the way until the end of the file. So this was some really, really simple debugging using macros. Um, there's cases where you might want to, to do this in a longer block to figure out where your code is actually being executed, especially if you have like an infinite loop or something like that. Um, but this was a, a very simple example of doing this. So um, I hope you've enjoyed learning about macros. If you have more questions about how to use them for more involved situations, you should join us on the Techendo channel on Freenode. Um, I'm Webster Tim on IRC and on Twitter. So uh, come and talk to us. Thanks.